Royals baseball from Detroit and the final road series for the Royals this regular season three against the Detroit Tigers Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hi everyone welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler I'm Ryan Lefevre good riddance to the Cleveland Indians and progressive field. And here are the Tigers, another team in the division the Royals have played very well against. They have, and they're going to want to really set them back. They have a chance to. You know what? There's no friends, no sympathy cards being sent this time of year, especially heading into the last week. Tigers got something on the line here, and the Royals know it. They can take care of them by getting the first game tonight. It would be nice. They've already won the season series from the Tigers, so we'll call the Royals our Honda most trusted players. 10 and 6 against Detroit. The last time the Royals were here in the middle of August, they swept a three game series from the Tigers. They sure did, man. They hit and they scored enough runs. But really, the main thing to hold this Tigers offense down was the pitching. Just three runs and 27 innings in the three game sweep. Very impressive job. They'll need that attention to detail in this series, especially the Tigers got a lot on the line right here. But you know what? They're a little nervous to the Royals, I can tell you. And speaking of pitching, It'll be Danny Duffy pitching game one tonight. and Tigers and when you have good starting pitching you don't have very long losing streaks and the Royals as a team are 10 and 3 and starts by Danny Duffy after a loss right starter in the right place tonight here in Comerica Duffy he's going to get out there and work his pitches he's back on beam now after a couple of hiccups he's starting to feel himself again and the Tigers know it and hoping for some offense. The Royals had trouble scoring runs in Cleveland, but Alcides Escobar last night hit his seventh home run, and that was the straightaway center field.
season, Alcides Escobar was trying to hit home runs, and he hit one. Then he shortened his swing hood, and now since August 1st, he's hit six home runs. Yeah, you know, Escobar, he's always wanted to be a power hitter. Like most middle infielders, they all dream of that. But now it's starting to become a reality, partly because he's aging, he's starting to recognize pitches better, but also he's not swinging at bad pitches anymore. It's rare that we see him swinging at sliders in the dirt. That's his key, picking out the right one. And those are Kubota power stats. It's the Royals and the Tigers. The lineups and the first pitch are next. are starting to turn in Michigan. Nice, cool beginning to a three-game weekend series. And here's the Royals lineup tonight against right-hander Michael Fulmer. Salvador Perez was in Ned Yo's first lineup. He's got a sore knee, nothing serious, but it's been bothering him for a while. So Drew Butera takes his place and will bat ninth. And Fulmer's first pitch of the game is a fastball strike to Gerard Dyson. Dyson was three out of ten with a sacrifice bunt in the just completed Royals Indian series. Won't be easy now. This young man Fulmer, he's he's been having a, a heck of a season. Now he's slowing down a little bit here in the second half of the season. They're limiting his daily activity. He's not going once every five days. He's going like once every six or seven. So it's been a little bit difficult for him to get any kind of rhythm. But he's a he's a strikeout pitcher. He's got 120 on the season. That's fourth most by a rookie pitcher in club history. So he's been good. He's got some pretty nice pitches. And he looked like a runaway American League rookie of the year through his first 19 starts. Not just one of the best rookies but one of the best pitchers period. But the league has caught up to him and now he's pitching a six month season for the first time in his professional career. Low to Whit Merrifield. Whit just one for 12 in the Cleveland series with a run scored. Pulled foul past third base coach Mike Gershley one and one. Fulmer's very aggressive. Especially with his fastball, he's going to come right at you. He believes nobody can hit it. And the slider is an effective pitch. It kind of keeps him off the fastball, but the changeup, that's been his go to pitch. Good arm speed. He sells it well. And he, the opponent's only hitting four, 140 off of him on that changeup. 
One and two on Witt. Two eighty overall, and three oh four since being called back up from Triple A Omaha. Homer's not going to back down early in the game. He's going to still majority fastballs. Two outs. Ninety four to ninety six with that four seam fastball. It's got some late life little two seam run. Change up right away it's a power change up sure is and, and he sells it well. He, he, it's a very difficult pitch. And that's showing Hosmer a lot of respect by showing that first pitch to him. I don't know if they can get anything going with two outs, but in the first innings this year, he's been a little little shaky at times. He's got a 5 2 5 ERA in the first, but so far he's got two outs. Second inning on, he's a 2.6 ERA. One and two. Quick tempo, gets it, challenges hitters. Still one and two. The Tigers defense minus 48 defensive runs saved. Wow. It's big ballpark. No wonder it's 28th out of 30 teams. Two and two on Hosmer with a 97 mile an hour fastball. Last time the Royals came through here they didn't have their center fielder Cameron Mabin out there. But he's back in that lineup now covers a lot of ground in the outfield and has been swinging a pretty good bat lately. And out to Mabin. Well hit pretty good considering where it was down and away. And Fulmer gets the Royals in order in the first. For the Royals, three here in Detroit and then back home for a six game homestand. Tigers are coming off a three game sweep in Minnesota. They had a long, long day and night yesterday, a day night doubleheader after a rainout, and they did not land in Detroit until about 3 a.m. And it's been a very up and down stretch for the Tigers. They have won five straight, including that sweep. Before that, they had lost eight out of 11. And here's Ian Kinsler returning to the lineup. We showed you the replay when the Royals were in Cleveland. He was 
hit on the head by the Indians Trevor Bauer on Sunday and has not played since. Yep, four days off. I mean, it would have been nice if he'd have taken three more, stay out of this series. But he's a gamer, one to play in last night's doubleheader, but he they held him out. This is vicious. Whenever this happens, you close your eyes. I mean, this is this is so dangerous. And the fact that he stayed on his feet was amazing. So that's uh, that's quite a shot to the noggin. Mm. One ball, one strike. Twenty six home runs and one hundred and six runs scored for leadoff man Ian Kinsler. Breaking balls just inside from Danny Duffy. Danny faces the Tigers for the seventh time and his fifth start this year. Three and one. Duffy's fastball's big. There's no doubt about it. He's going to average around 93, 94 miles an hour. He'll top 96, sometimes some 97s. Solid breaking ball. Wow. Tight zone. Let's see where those last two pitches were. Well, number four was a little high, and number five was close. Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. American League ranks for Danny Duffy. Fifth in the league in ERA, second in pitches per inning, 14.8 pitches per inning. And with a 12 and 2 record, the second best winning percentage. And he's been excellent when it comes to command. So to see that leadoff walk the first bat of the game is a little unusual. Now he walked two in his last start against the White Sox and two against Oakland. Before that, zero and one. So he's not too concerned about missing that strike zone. And I think he had a strike that wasn't called. May have been listed to center field. And Dyson makes a play, one down. The Royals defense tonight sponsored by Ford. Gerard Dyson been impressive. He's getting a lot of work out there. Plus 16 defensive run save. That's pretty good. Seventh out of all big league outfielders. And he loves it here. 420 straight away at Comerica Park. Big yard. Huge center field. Down and away to Miguel Cabrera. And before this inning began, they showed a montage of his milestone hits up on the video board. His first major league hit, his 500th hit, his 1,000th hit, his 1,500th hit. His 2,000 hit. That skips by Hosmer, and that's going to get Kinsler to third base. Okay, Danny Duffy. He's he's picked off more runners this year than anybody else, and he uses that slide step or that little step off move there, and it just. He whiffed it. He got underneath Kinsler. Now he's picked off Kinsler before. So he's trying to get him again. Maybe he just got a little bit too happy with it. And it was nice to see Hosmer's throw. Duffy backing up. Alex Gordon both backing up third base. So that's a tough air. He's got five pickoffs total this year. And how about this? The Royals are going to bring the infield in on Miguel Cabrera in the first inning. Typically, when a manager does that early, he thinks it's going to be a low scoring game. So he's going to try to help out Duffy if he can. Cabrera only hit 233 off of Duffy. And that's that's a pr that's pretty good if you're holding Miguel Cabrera under 250. 233. So we'll see if what he can do with a 2 0 pitch. He's behind the count.
3 and 0. Cabrera reached another milestone last Sunday. This is his first home game since then. 2,500 hits last Sunday at Cleveland, the fourth youngest in Major League history to reach 2,500 hits. And he'll take a walk, and that's Duffy's second in the first inning. Now, he was very careful with Miguel there, and as he knows that. The chances with nobody outs here for them to score that run could be a lot better, but he's counting on getting Victor Martinez to hit the ball into a, a ground ball double play. That's what he's thinking here. And they give him a run to take two early in the game. So Ned's infield's going to be go back, middle infielders, Merrifield, Escobar, see if they can put him in the lane. But Victor's been a good hitter against Duffy in his career 10 for 33, two homers. Martinez had a lot of trouble lately with his knees, so he's one of the slowest runners in the American League. Any kind of ground ball, and there's a chance for a double play. That's right. Butera got a little backswing there in the helmet with the bat. A little wake up call for him. Low. One and one. So far, Diaz, home plate umpire, not given that low part of the strike zone. That's exactly where Duffy wants to stay. Breaking balls down, anything that gets Victor to hit the top of the ball. Two and one. Duffy is only walked two batters in the first inning just once this year. Got it in on the knuckles, two balls, two strikes. He's got done watching Mike Napoli in Cleveland, who set an Indians franchise record for strikeouts at 186. Victor Martinez has 86 strikeouts. So 100 fewer than Napoli and 86 for Martinez is a career high. So he's a tough man to strike out. Danny could use that and he had a pretty good rip at a fastball. Still two and two. Yeah, Duffy he barely came set there. You know, he we, we know that he he'll quick pitch with nobody on base but with the runner at first he's got to come to a complete stop. He did just barely. A balk is something he def definitely doesn't want. In the dirt, and Cabrera heads to second, and the throw goes into center field. Now Cabrera to third, and that throw is late. One run, no hits. Duffy's walked two, and the Royals have committed two errors. Looks like Butera, you know, he had a chance. But looked like he rushed it a little bit. Now he went to the glove to hand to pick it up, and, it, and the ball sailed on him. His arm angle was a, was wasn't quite up high enough, and the ball sailed. Merrifield did all he could to try to get to it before it reached the outfield. They're going to call it a wild pitch, getting Cabrera to second, and then he goes to third on the. Throw and they were the Tigers were looking at his hand. May have landed heavy on that left hand as he was sliding into third base. Get 
Couldn't really tell. Yeah, could, didn't notice anything there. Yeah, and, and couldn't see it. His, his right hand was behind him. Third walk of the inning. That'll get Drew Butera out to the mound and Dave Island out of the dugout. Yeah, well, you know, Danny having a hard time finding his mechanics. Sh that, that shoulder's a little bit loose. He's, it's flying open a little bit. He's, he's not able to get that direction going directly down 90, or excuse me, north and south, that left shoulder. Excuse me, his right shoulder. He, he wants to just keep that leverage, stay on top of the ball, and let the ball hunt, let that fastball work. Another good year for J.D. Martinez, despite missing a month and a half. And he takes a whack at a first pitch fastball, 0 and 1. Okay, now Cabrera, we're trying to figure out how how his hand. Let's check the throw on Butera. The throw is, is sailing now. Merrifield's going to do all he can. Did it hit Cabrera? Yeah, it hit his left hand. That's what they were checking. One and one. Okay, let's see it again it's in super slow motion. And hit his uh, index finger on his left hand. Duffy jumps ahead one and two on J.D. Martinez. Broke his right elbow running into the wall at Kauffman Stadium in the middle of June. And that kept him out. Until August 3rd. And he is better now than he was before he broke his elbow. Been playing with a sense of urgency, trying to catch up for that time he missed. Hitting 351 since his return from the DL. And in the meantime, Duffy, with one out, has already thrown 22 pitches. Now that's what he's done since he's been off that DL. Good numbers. I've noticed in the series that we played them how much more aggressive he is. He's a, he's got a good eye to play, but he's been swinging early in counts, trying to get that heater before that pitcher gets him. Still one and two. Not the first inning that Danny Duffy envisioned or Butera. So he's going to have to work his way through it. Slide step. Two balls, two strikes. Cabrera at third, he walked. Martinez at first, he walked. And the run that scored Kinsler reached with a walk. And another foul ball. Seven pitches in this at bat for J.D. Martinez and 25 pitches in the inning for Danny Duffy. Foul tip. And a strikeout. Very good. Now with a with an all right-handed hitting lineup that Brad Osmus is throwing out there at him, he's going to really have to concentrate on bringing his changeup and that little slider or breaking ball. Now that was a changeup there. Very nice execution. Good follow-through. Continue to, to work down. First and third, two down to Justin Upton, who was warmly received as he was announced tonight. I wouldn't call it a big ovation, but there weren't any boos. That was the case the last time we were here, and here's the reason why. Our Toyota League leaders in his last 28 games 
Upton has driven in 33. That ties him with Hanley Ramirez for the most in the American League. And that curveball is a little bit high. Yep. You know, it's how, it's how you finish the season, and he's been getting some big home runs for the Tigers. Can't strike him out, though. He's got 170. Two and one. And 170 strikeouts. That's fourth most in the American League behind Chris Davis, Napoli, and George Springer. Two and two. Likes to pull the ball, but he'll hit opposite field homers too, as we witnessed at the K the last time they were there off of Soria. He hit a bomb and that was a difference maker. That pitch was down and away too. It was it was a strike, but yeah, it was impressive home run. Mm -hmm. And that's when he was in a groove. But uh, hopefully he'll stay in that little rut. His last 12 games just hit 184, so maybe they could keep him cooled off. Still two and two. 31 pitches thrown by Duffy. Lead 2 0. So Duffy was one strike away from keeping it a one run inning. But Justin Upton drives in Miguel Cabrera. Victor Martinez goes to third on the double. 25th on the season for Upton. Just stayed up. It was up and out over the plate. That's the reason he was able to get to it. So you never know. Before the game, what's going to evolve, obviously. But Duffy having a tough time. The two errors have hurt him in this inning. He wants to hold the damage down at two runs. Here's Eric Ibar. Breaking ball strike. The Tigers have been using him at third. Nick Castellanos is still on the disabled list with a broken hand. Ibar, when the Royals were here in August, was just acquired from the Braves in a trade for former Royal Mike Avilas. Duffy's ahead, 0-2. Well, you know the Tigers coming in with a 2.59 average against lefties, sixth best home runs, 54. That's third best, so they've got a lot of power. Overall, they're seventh in the American League in that home run category. Ivar strikes out. So two runs, three walks, two errors, 35 pitches.
six year contract look a little better. And he drives in a run with a double. The Tigers get two in the first inning. Royals went down in order against Michael Fulmer in the first. Kendry's Morales will lead off the second. And Paulo Orlando and Alex Gordon, they moved up when Salvador Perez was scratched with the sore knee. Fastball strike to Morales. Morales was on that list of productive hitters since the end of August that we showed you before Justin Upton's double. Kendry still has the most runs driven in in the American League in the month of September. 25 and a chance to tie or surpass the Royals record. Al Cowens in 77 Jeff King in 97 both drove in 30 in September. There's the change up. Two and two. And Morales going to see some more of those. I got the feeling most of the Royals are because the former knows that they're an aggressive hitting lineup. So he, that's a one pitch that can neutralize him. Second strikeout. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Paulo Orlando will bat fifth tonight one for six in the Cleveland series. Not a bad idea. Oh and one. Ibar solid fielder. Been a shortstop his entire career. Now late. He's going to move around. Good hands, good arm. One and one. Change up. Anywhere from 88 to 89 with that pitch tonight. I mean, it looks like a fastball until the last three feet. This is best pitch. And, and then back with a fastball at 96. Yeah, so he's he's really using his secondary pitches a lot more than he did in his last start against. The Royals now in three starts against the Royals he's 0 and 2 but his ERA is 275. So you know, they've roughed him up a little bit they've, they've had a little bit of success on him. But he's pitching a lot different than he did that first time through I mean, or that first time they saw him he 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 was just throwing nothing but fastballs first time through the order. Hey. 0 and 1 to Alex. It was three out of nine against the Indians with two walks and an RBI. Shane Jeffs outside, one ball, one strike. The first time the Royals saw Fulmer, he had an impressive scoreless streak going 33 and a third innings without allowing a run. I mean, that was, that was big time. I mean, that, that's, that was in Fernando Valenzuela territory. For a rookie. All right. He had 35 innings in 81. Couldn't quite get to it. Two and two. Into the Tiger dugout. Alex two for six off a of Fulmer. Full count. All year long Alex has seen nothing but breaking balls in and down. 
He's trying to look for something out over the plate. Fastball got him looking. Fulmer strikes out the side. Alex turns around to talk it over with Laz Diaz. Has a short conversation. Fulmer's retired the first six with four strikeouts. Been on such a roll. Joel Goldberg down by the Royals dugout. Had a two start stretch where he struggled. Been back on the last two. There's a reason for those struggles. Since we switched him over for the pen, transitioned to a starter, what he did was very, very difficult to do, but he made it look really easy. And he finally hit a wall. And he he showed us all, reminded us all that he is human. But um, he fought through it, got through it. We, we adjusted his in-between work a little bit to kind of um, help him bounce back a little bit better and give him some more rest, and, and he has. And so they've made those adjustments. I mean, if you think about it, guys, during that stretch where he was 11-0, the Royals were 11-0 in 11 straight starts. He went at least six innings every single start, then had the two against Boston where they really hit him around, and Detroit where he went under six back to form the last two. And now this one will turn out better to start the inning. We saw something interesting that last inning, guys, and you know, maybe he got squeezed a little bit, and then the error happened. But those three walks in the first inning, he had allowed two total in the first inning on the year. We'll see if he can get back into that groove right now because Dave Island happy with what he has been doing lately. And he put it this way. We hear about a dead arm a lot of times. He said it wasn't a dead arm. It was like a dead body. He was just worn out head to toe, and now he's back to where they hope he he, he was before. Well, let's hope that he can make his adjustments now and just shut them down the rest of the way because the way Fulmer's pitching, it's going to be tough to score runs off of him. And typically, when you see a long inning like that from from Danny Duffy, he, he makes those adjustments. And most of the time, retires in one, two, three. Glacius went down and got a tough pitch. Glacius took a wide turn around third. That would have been a very unwise move to go to third. So he has a one out double. Ah, it's his 23rd double on the season, and he raked it. That was the ball he went down, barreled it. Good aggressive turn. He would have been out by a mile. Ian Kinsler with a runner in scoring position. Kinsler walked in the first. 
And then he went first to third on a throwing error by Duffy. Duffy trying to pick him off. And then he scored on a throwing error by Drew Butera. Duffy walked three, and the Royals committed two errors. And the Tigers got two runs on one hit in the first inning. Breaking ball strike to Kinsler. Hit hard and foul. Kind of a disappointing crowd, I'm sure, for the Tigers. The Tigers have won five straight. They have the second wild card position. It's a Friday night, and there are a lot of empty seats, especially in the upper deck. The Tigers are 13th in the major leagues in attendance. It's pulled foul, still 0 and 2. Yeah, you know, hard to tell. But on a Friday night, you'd expect a few more fouls in here. They are right in the hunt. One ball, two strikes after. This series with the Royals, Cleveland comes to town for four, and then the Tigers finish on the road in Atlanta. That's weird. Yeah. yeah there's, you got 15 teams in each league. You're going to have an interleague series all the time. Base hit left field. Iglesias will be held at third. So Kinsler, his first game back since Sunday with. Concussion like symptoms has walked and singled in his first two plate appearances. He was really quick with his hands here. Is that, that slider again? That's what they're picking on. That's Iglesias hit the double on it. And now Kinsler's able to drop the barrel right down now through it. And this looks like they might be looking for that, that breaking ball tonight. And it's staying up just enough. Duffy might, might like to try to get that down and bury that pitch. Make it hit the dirt. Cameron Maben was out on a fly ball to center field in the first inning. Kinsler's got 14 steals. He'll go. He's aggressive. That was a swing, 0 and 1. Two of the best throwing catchers in the game are on the bench tonight. Salvador Perez for the Royals, James McCann for the Tigers. Outside, one and one. Drew does an adequate job back there throwing runners out. This season, he's three for out of 16 for a 19 percentage. 19 percent. He works on it all the time. Two and one. Now there's been several pitches tonight where it would appear that Danny Duffy hasn't missed by much. And he hasn't missed the strike zone by much, but keep an eye on where Butera's target is. That's down and in, and Duffy will throw over there. So Duffy, you could say, well, he's not all over the place, and yet there's been a few pitches where Drew Butera. That one didn't miss too much, but that was supposed to be down and in. A few pitches ago, the pitch was supposed to be away, and it was in. Well, he's not doesn't have his best command. The stuff looks good, but he's just not locating exactly where he wants it. And that's going to happen. You know, he, he's, he's a good enough pitcher to where he can find a way to get through it with that stuff. He doesn't have to be perfect. He can blow it by hitters. They're going to miss it. Back and out of play, and it's an overused sports definition for a player. But Danny Duffy, 
all the things that he has done better this year compared to other years done a much better job of staying within himself. He doesn't you don't see him try to throw harder in situations like this. You rarely see him overthrow. He just keeps pitching until he finds it. That was a good pitch down still two and two on Maven. And we've seen Duffy do that. We've seen him pitch through. Lack of command before. I'm a little bit surprised Kinsler hasn't attempted to steal. It's not running. And Maven lifts it foul. 52 pitches thrown. Thirty five of those were in the first inning. Just down and in. See Duffy's wanting to swing and miss on that so now you got to credit the hitters for laying off of that. So when they when he's made a mistake with the, with that breaking ball they've hit it. The ones that he's, he means for swing and misses off the plate, they're taken. He needs to make a pitch right here. Popped up a mile high. And Escobar makes a grab with two hands. Looked like he called a fair catch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Join us for Futures Night next Friday as we welcome select Royals minor league players to the K. The event will feature a pregame autograph session open to all fans on the left field concourse so arrive early to meet your future Royals get your tickets now at Royals.com or by calling 1-800-6 Royals that is next Friday that's and always a fun day yeah get a glimpse of the Royals pitchers and players of the year usually have the award ceremony on the field and so if you follow the organization closely you can put a face with a name. And you know they won't be in their flip flops and their shorts. They'll all be dressed to the nines. And make them do that. It's really good. It's classy. Let's those young players know that this is the big leagues. It's a special place. They're all decked out. Miguel Cabrera with runners at first and third two down. And now it's a 20 pitch inning for Duffy after 35 last inning. Cabrera walked, went to second on a wild pitch, to third on an error, and then scored on Upton's double. Under 200 with two outs and runners in scoring position. Unlike Miguel Cabrera. And the air to right. So that average will go down as Paulo Orlando makes a play. So a long inning for Duffy, but a scoreless inning. And at the end of two, Detroit leads 2 0.
Football is brought to you by Thoroughbred Ford. Ready for a great deal on a new Ford? Then it's time to go to Thoroughbred Ford. Detroit, Michigan, the original home of Ford, and many others. Ball one to Alcides Escobar. Michael Fulmer has retired the first six Royals with four strikeouts, including three in a row. Escobar lines it to center field. Maben is coming up and goes into a slide and makes a catch. Not too bad for Escobar, you know. Sometimes if you hit him off the end of the bat like that, it's a tough read for the center fielder, but Maben was right on it. He's able to come right in that sinking line drive. They missed him when he was out. It's a good, good center fielder. Plays hard. Covers a lot of ground. Hey. Cuthbert takes a strike. Three hits and three walks for Cuthbert in the Cleveland series. Having longer plate appearances like he did when he was hitting around 300 for the first five months. Two and one. We were talking to Ned earlier tonight about the balance between not overworking a young player and at the same time allowing him to experience the grind of 162 games. And on one hand, you want him to know what it feels like and how to break through playing in six straight months, but not grind them into the ground. No, you're exactly right. Two down. Managers got to get a good read on, on their position players, especially when they're young. And they're going to, the player's never going to say, I'm tired. They're not going to, you know, so, so if he called him in the office and said, hey, you know, your production's down a little bit, you know, I'm going to, I could just tell you, you, you might need a breather. So the, you know, the player's going to say, well, I feel good, but it's up to the manager to know his players. And Ned does a good job of reading them. Are you are you hurting more physically this time of year or is it just harder to keep your concentration I think you're mentally toast. I think the mental side is, is, is a little bit more challenging because you you can overcome if you have a tough mind you can overcome the physical pain by saying ah, I'm not I'm fine. Uh, I'm okay. I play right through it rather than waking up in the morning like typical everybody has some aches and pains in the morning especially these players. And you get up right away and you're going, oh, I don't know if I can make it. You don't even want to let that into your mind. Mm -hmm. You just say, hey, that's part of, of a, a human body. You're, you're going to be sore. Uh, I'll wait till I get to the ballpark. So the mind is much stronger. But it can be weak this time again, this time of the season for players. Two and one on Butera. Added to the lineup late after Salvador Perez was scratched. Sore knee, which is typical for any catcher this late in the season, but Ned wanted to give Salvi an extra day. Here's a base hit into center field, and Butera is on with two down. You, Vote for the Royals Player of the Month at one of the seven Rally House locations in the KC metro area. All participants will be entered to win a majestic prize pack. Dyson grounded out to first in the first inning. Chops it out to Kinsler. And that'll do it. Three scoreless innings for Fulmer. The Royals get their first runner with the Butera single.
Tigers just past the Orioles for the second wild card spot. Our greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Back on September 14th, the Orioles were one game back in the division and one game ahead with the top wild card spot. They have lost six of their last eight. Now they're seven back in the division and one half back of the Tigers in the wild card. And the Orioles at home against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Who happen to be. 24 games under 500 but Arizona leads early in that game two nothing in the third Orioles picking a bad time to. to go south that's for sure. Boston Red Sox they were amped for that series and they just flat out swept them and took it. Every bit of it offensively now they have pitched them. Victor Martinez drills it to deep left field and off the back wall. That's the easiest way for him to get around the bases. Number 26 and Detroit leads three nothing. Yep, they're a powerful team now that that, that fastball it just stayed out there. He barreled it. You could tell on, on contact the sound. And the trajectory of that ball it was. Not coming back. Four guys in the lineup tonight in the Detroit lineup that have. 25 home runs or more. Down and into J.D. Martinez in a long battle in the first. Duffy struck him out. One and one. Victor Martinez has done very little against the Royals this year. This is the sixth and final series. Between the two teams, and Victor Martinez is hitting around 180 against the Royals. He has only 12 hits, but five of those are home runs. One and two on JD Martinez. Julio Daniel Martinez, just in case you're scoring at home. No, no. It's nice to know that. Yeah, he's a predominantly opposite field hitter. But with a lefty pitching, and the breaking ball coming into him, he's going to open up and, and pull more. Duffy ended up getting him with a fastball swinging in the first. Danny has struck out two tonight, adding to his Royals record. For a lefty in a single season. 183 strikeouts for Duffy. That's the most. For any lefty. In a Royals single season by 27. So he shattered the old mark. Held by. Not Billy. But Bill Butler. Yeah. He pitched for the Royals back in the I 70s. Saw, I saw that I had to read it twice. That's pounded foul, still one and two. So far, so far in this at bat, we've seen him try to go to right field. We see him trying to pull the ball, but but we're seeing, I, I told you, a more aggressive JD Martinez, and he's and he's getting the majority of his hits to left field now. Pulled to the left side. Chesler throws him out. I don't know if Chesler stumbled first trying to get to that ground ball, but it ended up being a kind of a difficult short hop. One away. And now Justin Upton, who was being booed every time he came to the plate, and when he would leave the plate, 
Yes, he was racking up the strikeouts the last time the Royals were here. He doubled in a run in the first inning, and now Upton has driven in 34 in his last 29 games. And he has 80 on the year. So getting closer to a respectable number of RBIs for guys in his price range. Yeah. Well, before the season, uh, I think the, that the Tigers expected more wins at this particular point with, with what they did and the investments they've made. Getting a new closer and Francisco Rodriguez, Upton, a few free agent ads. But they're still in it. It's really no one single area when you look at the Tigers category by category that stands out and says, okay, yeah, playoff team. Two balls, two strikes. They are 10th in the league in ERA. Their bullpen is 12th in the league. Middle of the pack for runs scored per game, 10th in stolen bases. We showed you the poor defensive numbers. Oh. A line drive to left field, gone in a flash. And the Tigers have hit two home runs in this third inning. Victor Martinez and now Justin Upton. And he's driven in two in the first three innings. Two more homers to right handed bats. That gives him 24. Duffy's given up to right handed bats. Just one to a lefty. And right away, I mean, that, that ball, he hit the top, middle top of it. It had top spin, but it was crushed. Nice grab on the ricochet by that fellow in the orange sweatshirt. So 70 pitches in two and a third innings and four runs scored. In the first inning, it was control, and Danny walked three. Two of those scored. He also committed a, an error on a pickoff attempt, and now he's getting bitten by the home run in the third. Inside to Ibar, he struck out to end the first inning. I see Lloyd McClendon in that dugout. Triple A manager in Toledo for the, the Tigers. Former bench coach here. And hitting coach. And former player for the Tigers. Played a lot of earlier in his career with Pittsburgh and Jim Leland. And then managed the Pirates and had one of the great managerial meltdowns in the last 10 years. Two balls, two strikes. You remember that? I do. He was mad about a play at first base and he pulled first base out of the ground and left with it. Yeah. He took his base and he went home. Yeah, I remember. Just walked down in his dugout with it. Then he managed Seattle. Seventy five pitches. Long run Paulo foul by a couple of feet. Nice grab by Bo Jackson. Yeah, glad he could show up tonight. Well, you know, that first inning when Duffy walked three, that was alarming. You could just kind of tell that it wasn't going to be Duffy's night. Now, his, his offense can come back and pick him up, but Michael Fulmore's making it very difficult for that. Out to Cuthbert again. Duffy takes a knee to get out of the throwing lane. Two outs. Royals fans take advantage of the special $10 high V level tickets for the game this upcoming Tuesday when the Royals host the Twins. 
To receive this special discounted offer, the tickets must be purchased through the free MLB.com ballpark app. Download the app and purchase your tickets today or visit royals.com slash ballpark offer for more details. That's Tuesday. Jared Saltalamakia chased a changeup down. He rolled out to short in the second inning. Switch hitting catcher. Batting just 178, but he has 12 home runs, and one of those was a walk off home run against the Royals. Yeah, I'm not sure about McCann and his health, but Salty coming into this game was two for three against Duffy with two home runs. Maybe that's why he got the nod. One and two. Still one and two on Jared Saltalamakia, the longest name last name in Major League history. One two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen letters. Oh. Yeah. Wonder how the great legendary Yankee PA announcer Bob Shepard would like to say his name. Now batting. Yeah you probably would have loved that one. Jared. Saltalamakia. Yeah, he, he, he. Number who? 39. That's good. That's, that's a good imitation. He, who, who, did, who was his favorite? Was it uh, Shigi? Shige, Shigatoshi Shige, Hasegawa. Yeah. Shigi. I think the two he enjoyed the most, he said, were Mickey Mantle and Shigatoshi Hasegawa. He was the PA broadcaster there for years. Good pitch. He just challenged him. Duffy has struck out three. The Tigers have scored four. They get home runs from Martinez and Upton in the third. Fulmer has allowed one base runner in the first three innings. Tigers lead 4 0. And it's time for our sprint trivia question. Name the three Tiger second baseman to hit 25 or more home runs in a season. Now Kinsler has 26. I don't know how many of those are as a second baseman. Yeah, and DH. Well, you know, you might fill in as a DH. Huh. Here or there. Oh, I'm 
to say Lou Whitaker. One of them. Good one. Sweet Lou. Mm -hmm. Him and Alan Trammell were one heck of a double play combination. Fulmer to the bag and Merrifield beats it out. Fulmer didn't go directly to first base for a moment there. He thought he might be able to run that ball down. And Witt is on with an infield single. Yeah, you could tell that, that you know, with a good runner like Witt, that he didn't take the right route, and there's no way that he was going to be able to get over there in time. So that's the Royals' second hit. Hundred and thirty first infield hit. Second best in the American League. Good speed. See if they can get a little something going on. Haas. Pitched him tough, threw him a lot of change ups in that first at bat. One and one. Michael Fulmer first, second, third time through. Tough, toughest is second time through, and that's where the Royals are right now. Third time hadn't gotten much better. He's good. One and two. Changeup stayed eight, stayed up in the zone. He just got it in on. Him. Might be set up for a changeup away here. I think he's going to give him anything straight. Not trying to get him in. Ooh. Slider. Five strikeouts in three and a third innings. That's a sharp downward bite. His changeup goes away from the left-handed hitters. He's got tough angles. And with that slider, Fulmer struck out Morales in the second inning. But I looked it up. Ian Kinsler's home runs have all come as a second baseman. That's what I thought. So, Kinsler, you want to go with Lou Whitaker? Mm -hmm. One more. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Cecil Fielder playing any second base? <laughs> How about Brandon Inch? He was mostly a third baseman. How about Damian Easley? Wow, good call. Easy. Jam. A lot of room out in center field, and it's down. Merrifield read it well, and he goes first to third. Now, Maven, he tried to put his glove up and act like he was going to catch it, but Merrifield already read it. Good for Morales. A jam shot that kept his bat intact, didn't break it. Perfect. That bat will live for another at bat. And Woods over there with one out. Let's see if they can get him home. Paulo Orlando with runners at first and third. Paulo saw two wicked changeups in the second inning, which set up a fastball up and struck him out.
been a while since Paulo has gotten a base hit on a first pitch because he's not getting very hittable pitches on the first pitch. That's what they do. Ward gets out and he's a first ball fastball hitter and they go away from that. Drew Butera the other day on Joel's pregame show was talking about their meetings that they have before games and when pitchers and catchers get together the first thing they talk about is how can we get fastballs by these guys since that's the premium pitch most pitchers have. And so they're going to the, the opposition does the same thing. That leads Iglesias right to the bag close but out. That's exactly what Fulmer needed. A 6 3 inning ending double play. Play and we welcome in Jeff Montgomery and tough night for Danny Duffy in particular in the pitch count department. Yeah, really, that first inning was tough for him, throwing 35 pitches in the first inning. Really, near, never has been able to find his rhythm tonight. It's really been a struggle for him, and that's one thing as a pitcher. Once you get in that rhythm, sometimes we see pitchers get into it in the second or third inning, but so far, Danny just really fought that this evening. And you know that they've hit. His breaking ball is more than we've seen in the other, and he's just leaving it up. He's not burying it down. Yeah, and command, whether it be your fastball, fastball command is probably the most important, but your, you know, your off pitches, if, if you're not finishing them out of the strike zone, they're much more hittable, and that's the thing about Danny's breaking ball. It's a pitch that's designed really to be a ball. It's designed to be out of the strike zone, appears to be a strike, and then it has that late life, and hitters swing and miss it a lot. But tonight, unfortunately, they're getting to him. Fouled away by Iglesias. He doubled with one out in the second inning. And Danny's coming up on 90 pitches. He'll get Iglesias, Kinsler, and Mabin. Popped up. Merrifield wants it. One out. And guys, another thing with Danny Duffy coming in to tonight's game had almost 170 innings pitched. His previous high was about 149 in, uh, innings pitched in 2014. So, you know, sometimes that additional workload, you're, you know, it, it takes some time to adjust. And Joel had a chance to visit with Dave Island earlier today, and he talked about it kind of hit the wall, not necessarily arm-wise, but just body-wise. And that's just the way things are a lot of times this time of season. And maybe a little bit of that is catching up with Danny as well. Ball one to Kinsler. And Dave reminded us with his comments to Joel that Danny made something difficult look very easy going to the bullpen and he wasn't there for a long time and then thrust into a starters role and had to 
stretch out and the Royals brought him along very slowly. And now we just kind of take it for granted that every time Danny Duffy takes him out he's going to go seven innings and allow three runs or fewer. And really if you think about any great pitcher in the game and HUD say a guy like Randy Johnson or you know here I remember Brett Saberhagen da David Cohn guys who have tremendous seasons. They have three or four games during the course of the year that you just want to throw them out. They're just games that you know they're they're games you want to trash and then you have you know four or five games that are games that you won't replicate again. They only had that game in Tampa where he struck out 16 batters. That'll be hard for him to replicate that game again this season. But you know you want to be somewhere consistently good in the middle in those other you know 20 25 starts. Kinsler walks for a second time and he's been on base three times in the first four innings. And that's Danny's fourth walk tonight. So Kinsler hits for power and when he is not hitting home runs he's getting on base and scoring runs. He has scored 107 runs this year. The highest percentage of runs scored after reaching base, and that belongs to Ian Kinsler. Rounded up to 46% of the time that he gets on base, he turns it into a run. So, that's the kind of guy you want to lead off. Give him the bat as many times as you can. June June 21st was the last four walk outing that Duffy had against the New York Mets in New York. I think this may be only the third game this season Danny's had more than two walks in a game. And now Maben cranks it to the gap and into the Royals bullpen. You talk about how infrequently Danny Duffy walks four. How about how many times he gives up three home runs? Just the third time this year that Danny Duffy has given up three home runs in a game, and the Tigers have a 6 0 lead in the fourth. Obviously when you're sitting fastball and you get your pitch you're not going to miss it and he did. Yeah the Fox tracks pretty much told the story and that one right in the very middle box of the Fox tracks. Fouled into the first row. 0 oh and 2 on Cabrera. He walked and scored in the first inning. Now Kevin McCarthy warms up in the fourth with one out. Duffy's at 96 pitches. Three pitch strikeout. Those two guys have gone deep. Line drive home runs to left field and left center, Upton and Maben. It's just Maben's fourth home run of the year, and that ball, the exit speed was 111. That's right. Some bicep involved with that. Didn't miss it. Victor Martinez has the other home run. That was in the third to left field, and he's also walked. That home run was the third home run that Victor Martinez had hit off of Danny Duffy this season. And now a shot by Cuthbert. And Martinez is on for a third time. So I was talking about his numbers 
Monty against the Royals this year. He didn't have many hits. Two hits tonight. And now Victor Martinez has 13 hits against the Royals this year. Five home runs, and you say three of those are against Duffy. Yeah. So tonight, Danny Duffy goes three and two thirds innings. is brought to you by your local Kansas City area Chevy dealers visit for great prices on the all new 2016 Malibu by Panera Bread food as it should be with 24 KC Metro locations and by Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff low price every day. Well, it's the shortest start of the year for Duffy if you take away his early starts where he was limited by pitches his very first start he went three innings 48 pitches but tonight three and two thirds innings. Yeah if you look at the location on a lot of these pitches you are just either the, the, the breaking ball is not quite as sharp it's got a little flat finish to it or they're in a bad part of the strike zone I mean it's easy to measure walk it's easy to measure strikeouts oftentimes the hitters are the ones who measure the quality of the pitches Yeah, that's why lots of times you'll hear Dave Island talk about well we'll see what the hitters are doing against him that's a good gauge one pitch and Kevin McCarthy gets the final out of the fourth inning the Tigers add two on the Maven home run and leads six nothing at the end of four.
fifth inning. And a Northtown Mazda game break. This is Troy Tulowitzki against the Yankees' Brian Mitchell. That drives in two. And the Blue Jays have a 3 0 lead in the top of the fifth inning. Most of the divisions have the first place team out in front by quite a few games. Gordon grounds out to second base. Alex is 0 for 2. Boston, five and a half game lead. Cleveland, seven. Texas, nine game lead in the West. So keeping an eye on the wild card teams. And the Blue Jays have the top spot and an early lead against the Yankees. Talk about that lead the Texas Rangers have. When we saw the Rangers when we were in Texas, really kind of seemed like we got them going. That, remember that series? They were really struggling going into that series. Ever since then, they've been on fire. A surprise playoff team last year, the Texas Rangers. Looked like the Astros were going to run away with that division. And for two years in a row, the Astros just cannot beat the Rangers. Escobar gets it by Ibar, and he gets it by Iglesias, and he's on with one out. Who do you guys like among the division leaders, Boston, Cleveland, and Texas? All good teams. Boston's going to be pretty tough, but I'll tell you, watching the Indians play this last series, I know they're short with regards to the injuries to the rotation. But that will not be a team that surprises me if they go deep into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Red Sox, their their offense is just way too powerful. But you know, pitching controls the postseason, so it's hard to tell. But I think Boston and Toronto are going to end up being in it. Rangers, they're tough too. They're they got a good offense. Guy Odor, he's got a lot of power. Beltre's having a good season. You know, I brought that up within the last week. We had a stretch of games within a couple of weeks where we played the Orioles, we played the Yankees, we played the Blue Jays, and we played the Red Sox. And I was curious, you know, I'm asking people, you know, closely associated with those teams, you know, who's the best team in the division? Because they were pretty closely bunched, and everyone said the Blue Jays. And now Toronto have the they have the top wild card spot, but they're five and a half games out in the East. Momentum can be so important too. Who's playing good at the end of the season? Who's on that roll? And as we've seen the last two years, the the difference in the style of baseball and postseason is dramatically different because if you have a you a decent starting pitching and good bullpen, you can go a long way. And the reason is too the off days. So many off days there in between games, and gives those guys extra rest that you can go back with your number one starter. And that's why series, right? That's why I think with Indians, you got Kluber who's going to start at least a couple games in a series, and you got Andrew Miller now in that bullpen. He really lengthens them, and you know it's now a five or six inning ball game for them. Fulmer continues to roll, five scoreless innings, six strikeouts, and he's pitching with a big lead.
on one hit there were three walks two in the third and a couple of home runs and then two more in the fourth on a two run home run Kevin McCarthy got the last out of the fourth inning on a ground ball from J.D. Martinez so he stays out there for Upton Ivar and Saltalamacchia. Upton has driven in two with a double in the first inning and a home run in the third. And now Upton has driven in 35 runs in his last 29 games. See if McCarthy can get that heavy sinking fastball working. 92 to 95. Slider and a change. That's a chance to go multiple innings here for Ned. Off of his foot. That heavy sinker and hitter is going to hit the top of the ball and his last out when he picked up Duffy there a little 6 4 ground ball from J.D. Martinez. That's what McCarthy does. If it's working. He made one mistake in his last outing in Cleveland against Carlos Santana. Just just couldn't get the sinker down. He left it up and he knocked in a big run. I think he threw him a slider there. I think that was the second best pitch he threw. I think he just yeah. left it up. Yeah. Tough situation. How you talk about body language a lot and looking at Justin Upton now compared to even just maybe two months ago the difference he shows at the plate in his game and in the confidence it's it's so totally different. I agree with you and, and that's how you read uh, your the opposition at least a, a position player by the way he walks up to the plate. You just tell. Full count. Did you watch hitters walk to the plate from the on deck circle when you're trying to close out a game? I always try to get eye contact. Really? Very rarely would you get eye contact. I know playing behind pitchers, I, I watched. Oh, man. That's a long way to center field here. There's a reason why they call it dead center in some ballparks. And it's because many hard hit high fly balls die in this ballpark. Now he thought he got it in most ballparks at his home. So you tried to get eye contact. Yeah. Okay. Was there one hitter in particular that you was looking for eye contact back? Not necessarily. Stare downs. I you, you could I could I could tell by a hitter if he was. If you would look at him, he would look at you. A lot of times, they would look down. They didn't want. To, they didn't want you looking at him. How about you? How did you like the pitcher looking at you? You know, I didn't care. I got <laughs> in the batter's box, and, and and they were. You know, I'm not looking at their face. And a lot of them, it's a good thing, or your eyes would go bad. So look, I, I just tried to pick up that release point, kind of take a big visual of them. But I wasn't a big on, uh, eye contact guy. I, I I didn't care about looking at him. I don't know why, but a voice just. Said in my headphones here, Dion Sanders. <laughs> Is there no eye contact? No eye contact? No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe there was a story there. What about Albert Bell? He would. He would stare at you. Yeah, I bet he would. <laughs> the other thing I like. Albert to look Bell would stare at a crocodile. <laughs> I like to watch the the practice swing that the hitter would take either before he got in the batter's box. A lot of times that's telling me hey he wants a ball you know down and away or, or, or whatever I could read a lot from what I saw from the from the batter taking his practice swing. Yeah, Rhino's been saying that too. the last few games you know we show hitters step out of the box and it looked like they had top end coming down in fact they were looking for a heater up or having an uppercut swing. Interesting. You know, Hud Money's such a nice guy. You know, he's just so easy to be around, even tempered. You know, I mean, if, if you didn't, if you just met Monty now, you know, you'd think he's just a regular guy, you know, good athlete. But over the years, little by little, we find out where those 304 saves came yeah, from. Not between the lines, <laughs> he, he, he wasn't very nice. <laughs> no, and, and, and it's on. 
I mean, you're you're competing against the greatest in the world. You got to have uh, you got to have that competitive edge and confidence. And of course, we talk about that a lot too, because that's the extra man you got to take up there. I think adrenaline is a beautiful thing. Adrenaline was so key to. I know my game and a lot of guys who aren't physically gifted. I was not gifted the way a lot of players were. So sometimes you need something to get you to the next level. For me, it was adrenaline. But were you like that in high school and in college and in the minor leagues, or was that just something that? No, I think I think I was like yeah? that. Okay. Yeah. One and two on Salta La Macchia. Strike three call, delayed call by Laz Diaz. So McCarthy got the last out of the fourth, and three up, three down in the fifth. Four of their six on home runs. A Ram drives of the game. Victor Martinez leading off the third off the back wall in left field. Justin Upton with a line drive home run to left with one out in the third. And then in the fourth with a man on Cameron Mabin. A line drive in left center field into the Royals bullpen. Yep. And here we are. Those balls were squared up too. I, I, I mentioned uh, 111 exit velocity off the bat of Maven. Upton's was 113. So when you're getting that kind of velocity, you, you're squaring every bit of that baseball up with the bat. The baseballs were screaming. Yeah, they were. Two and zero on Dyson. It was. Grounded out to the right side twice, once to first, once to second. Third time through for the Royals. And now 3 0. Fulmer has not walked the batter. Hey. 3 and 1. Full count. Merrifield and Hosmer are coming up. Strike three. So Fulmer comes back from 3 0, and Dyson never takes the bat off of his shoulder. Our Sonic Slam inning contestant 
is Abraham Kabianga from Lenexa. That's right, you heard me. If the Royals hit a home run out of the park in this inning, Abraham wins $500. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Abraham wins 25 grand from Sonic and the Royals. Sure have the work cut out for them against Fulmer. What do you think? Did you guys see Kabianga? No, I liked it. Okay. Excellent pronunciation. Thank you. you. We were warned before the game that we may not be able to get it, and I said, man, Rhino, he'll nail it. He's all over those names. Stay hot. Witt has an infield single. And Fulmer has struck him out. One and two. It's really developed a nice changeup, hasn't he? Really has a pitch that he didn't need to throw lower levels of baseball and knew that that was going to be a pitch that was going to be a key to his success at the big league level and as a starting pitcher and one of the best in baseball now. Mm -hmm. And we hear that it was James McCann, the Tigers' regular catcher, that insisted that he throw the changeup. Just over Iglesias. And two hits for Witt. I'm going to take a look here at some of the work of Michael Fulmer. And he's a guy that throws three pitches and really in command of all three pitches he can be down in the zone he's got the, the great slider I think the most impressive thing to me is the fact he doesn't get rattled on the mound he's pitches like he's a much more experienced pitcher and makes pitches in the situation when he needs them yeah you know his, his violent delivery plus the fact that he's got a good tempo he, he gets out there and pitches doesn't take much time in between pitches you rushing hitters like that it makes it more difficult but the stuff is off the charts. Fastball changeup combo. And he's dropping in that little breaking ball. And if you look at him body wise, you wouldn't think he was 23 years old. You might think he was 33 years old. So he's filled out nice. He's not a, a guy that uh, you, know, you think is going to break down. I know the Tigers have really limited his starts recently because of the innings. But you know, he's a guy that uh, seemingly wants a ball every fifth day and ready to go. 6'3", 210 pounds, Michael Fulmer. Hosmer's fly to center and struck out. Yeah, to your point, Monty, his trademark pitch was his slider. But James McCann saw the potential of the changeup in spring training and he just kept putting that down. Fulmer would shake it off. And he just kept putting the changeup down. You need to learn how to throw this pitch. There's McCann. He's not in the starting lineup tonight. And it's made him a three pitch pitcher. With round second he'll hold on Hosmer's first hit. Two on with one out. Well the difference in being a two pitch pitcher and a three pitch pitcher at the major league level Maybe not as evident when you're facing right handed batters, but having that third pitch, that change up against lefties is, is a real difference maker. And I know even though I was a reliever, that change up, the ability to throw the change up was a difference maker. It made me a big league pitcher once I was able to, to, to have the confidence to go out and throw that change up in the curveball to be really a three and four pitch pitcher. But until you get success, until you're able to command that pitch to where you get ground balls you get swing and misses you you're missing bats it's it's sometimes tough to tell yourself to throw it because it may be your third best pitch mm -hmm. until you develop it then it may become your best pitch which it has for Fulmer. He's also had Justin Verlander as a mentor who became an elite pitcher in the American League Cy Young winner MVP when he became an all pitch pitcher. Out of second. Former covers, and they turn the double play. That is a difficult double play. Sure was, started by Miguel. Miguel doesn't get a lot of credit for playing good first base, but he's got a nice arm, and he rifled it across the diamond to Iglesias.
he didn't have control of it. So Ned's going to want to replay that. He's coming out making a. It appeared that he was making a pitching change, but he was making a pitching change and he was challenging. So Brad Osmus came out and he is protesting Ned's ability to have a challenge. And the thinking is, is that Ned made the pitching change first and Peter Moylan had come through the gate before Ned asked for the challenge. Well, Morales is keeping his helmet on now. Did he have total control of the baseball? It hits the heel of his glove. Now it rolls up his arm, and he still doesn't have it secured as Morales touched the base. So that's what they're contesting. The interesting thing is right now the only player on the field is Peter Moylan. Yeah. <laughs> Pete's out there saying, all right, I'm ready to pitch. It's one of the deadlines to initiate replay is before the signal of the pitching change. Or before the pitcher crosses the warning track or the foul line. And so depending on what happens here. We may see Brad Osmus if the call is overturned we may see Brad Osmus come out and protest. Yeah. One of he was he was already running in on the outfield grass. Yeah he was almost to the pitcher's mound when eventually Ned. Indicated he wanted the challenge. Okay. Safe. All right. We got we got some life here. Somebody's got to be able to come up with a big hit. Get back in this game. So if Moylan had come through the gate and he had crossed the warning track and he was on the grass. I'm not so sure the umpires are arguing well he did that on his own the. The manager did not make a pitching change. So I mean. That's interesting. If the manager doesn't bring him in Moylan doesn't bring himself into the game. The manager brings him into the game. And the manager comes out and tells the umpires who's coming into the game and then the umpires point to the official score 
in the press box to make it official that this guy's coming in. So maybe the umpires are explaining to Brad Osmus, look, the pitcher doesn't come in until the manager says that he does, and he asks for the challenge first before the pitching change. But lots of times at the start of an inning, they have already phoned down there and said Moylan's in next inning. So so Ned had not made his his you know, point out to the bullpen yet. Moylan just took orders by coming in. Is that right, Monty? Exactly. He knew he had the he was going to have the bottom of the inning. Right. So once he he thought the third out was made, yeah. he, he comes through the gate. Moylan sees out. He hears the crowd react, and he figures the inning's over. Right. I don't know if we've had in the third year of replay now. I don't know if we've had. At least in our games, a dispute as to the timing of the challenge. Now they might go back and take a look at where Moylan was when Ned called for the pitching change. The home plate umpire, Laz Diaz, he's on the right, and you can see he's got his he has his own lineup card when the coaches or the manager or sometimes a player come out and they exchange a lineup cards one copy goes to the umpire the home plate umpire so he's the one that you have to go through to make changes official so as far as a verbal command Laz Diaz he either knows whether Ned said I want to challenge and I want to make a pitching change or I want to make a pitching change and then I want to challenge which you can't do. Okay, so there's the challenge. But where's Peter Moylan at this point? If we keep going, well, there Peter he Moylan, boy, he's in he's in shallow center field yeah, already. That's what I was saying. He he'd come in just as it ordered to. You got the next inning. But it gets back to what is a legal pitching change when the pitcher? I mean, I'm not trying to make a joke out of this, but maybe who knows? Peter Moylan's not running in to go to the bathroom, right? I mean, he just he's just coming running in if. If he's not officially into the game by way of the umpire with the lineup card, then and Brad Osmus seems to be all right with the explanation this time around. I mean, he might be running into the clubhouse to change his shoes or to well, get a new glove. I just read Iasonia's lips, and it looked like he said, "You can protest if you want, but you know." He's got a six run lead. I didn't see. Uh, Laz Diaz look up and say P you know make a big P for a mm -hmm. protest. But interesting that. You know Michael Fulmer had to take all this time in between cool down. Thought the inning was over now he's getting back out there after another delay. Not too bad for him. Yeah let's see if. Royals can take advantage of it. So it's a 3 6 force out then. And Hosmer's out at second. Merrifield's at third. Morales is at first, and Paulo Orlando is at the plate, 0 1. One and one. Paulo is struck out and he is grounded into a double play. You know, watching Merrifield take his lead, he doesn't go all the way back to the base after the pitch is crossing the plate. He's watching the throw from Salt to Lamakia. Get in there. Kinsler couldn't get it out of his glove, so the Royals turned it into a run. So it's 6 1. And a run driven in for Paulo Orlando. We've seen Kinsler make those plays, but he just couldn't come up with it. I thought it was going to get by him. That pitch is on the outside part of the plate. Paulo went with it. I don't know if they they will throw him out as quickly as Paulo runs, but you got to be just perfect on a diving play like that to get it out of your glove in order to make it to a speedy runner. First and second for Alex Gordon. Former probably feels like Monty that 
This will be the equivalent of finishing the inning, going to the dugout, and then your offense goes down on three pitches and you're right back out there. Right, that's what I was going to say. It's almost like an extra inning for him. Maybe not pitch count wise, but as far as the way it would feel, you're exactly right. An extra up and down, right, as they say. Just foul 0 and 2. And that's one thing with uh, the replay and the review system. That was one of the first things I was concerned about. And we haven't seen a lot of situations where pitchers get hung out for a long time. But that's one of the things I was concerned about. What are pitchers going to do during these reviews? Now they've gotten so much better. But that one was a long review. And you know, fortunately we have not seen. Obviously the purpose is to get it right. I think they got it right. It's led to at least one Royals run now. So maybe get back in the game as a result of it. How about a three run bomb? So the Royals get one run. Fulmer strikes out his eighth in a long top of the sixth inning. And now Peter Moylan will take over in the bottom of the sixth inning. Danny Duffy went three and two thirds. He gave up six runs. And Kevin McCarthy went an inning and a third scoreless. And Moylan will get the nine, one, and two hitters. 45th appearance. 3 7 0 ERA. That's not too bad. Sinker slider pitcher. Only giving up four homers, 263 opponents average. He's done a nice job. When he faces righties, he likes that hard sinker in on their hands, and then he uses that sweeping slider. Ouch. Drew Butera got a pitch he was not expecting. But he was looking for that sweeping slider and got that sinker. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And too bad. I mean, and the way he's limping around here, that's he's in some pain. Side of the leg, and I'm on the wrist and the leg. I think. Yeah, you know, he didn't get a glove on that or anything. That, that was, and it was on the inside of the shin guard. So, might have got his calf. He is on the mound, by the way. Want to walk it off. Pitcher would actually call that a Shinberger. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
Let's go to Joel. Well, fortunately, the Royals have three catchers with expanded rosters, so if Drew couldn't go here, they could go to Tony Cruz. But Ned Yost and Nick Kenny both saying that if Drew were to get hurt and they wanted Salvi in there, they could do that. With that knee injury, he said not overly concerned. A little bit of fluid in the knee, but it's not major. Just give him a little bit of rest. He could play through it, no concerns at all, and just give him a little bit of rest and and maybe even have him out there. No concern. It's not extensive. So. I would think if something happened here especially with the score they might just go to Tony Cruz but Salvi very much available to come in if needed or to pinch hit. very little concern whatsoever about his name. One and two on Jose Iglesias. And thrown away by Cuthbert. And now Iglesias may have been hit by that throw. Remember Miguel Cabrera early in the game was hit by a throw at second base. It's an air on Cuthbert and the Royals third air tonight. He just running down first base minding his own business. And it hit off his right hand. Boy, those are those are two freak. Little injuries. Oh man, yeah, that, that, that caught got all two or three of them, and that's on his throwing hand. Fortunately, he had a batting glove on it. Might have helped it some. Remember his season ended against the Royals last year in September. He fractured his right middle finger, and they're working on his right hand. Remember, he was attempting a bunt. Oh yeah. Remember, broke his finger. Oh, it was terrible. Was that against us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who who was the pitcher? I don't remember that. He's going to stay in. All right. Let's answer our sprint trivia question. As Ian Kinsler comes up. Kinsler has 26 home runs this year all in games when he's played second base three Tigers so really two Tigers in addition to Kinsler with 25 or more home runs in a season. What do you think Monty? Only guy that comes to mind to me is uh, was Lou Whitaker. And I threw in Damian Easley remember Damian Easley had some big power years. There you go. Easily did that at Tiger Stadium. Two and zero on Kinsler. And 26 home runs, by the way, is not a career high for Kinsler. He had 32 for Texas in 2011. Two and one. Okay, let's take a look at where Drew Butera is putting his signs now. He's getting it down below his body. I think so. Peter Moylan is able to see the fingers better. This gray uniform. I think that may be what happened on that earlier pin. Another base hit for Kinsler. Alex chases it down deep. Iglesias will stop at third. Kinsler has a double. He's been on base four times in six innings. St. Louis Blues Hockey's coming to the Sprint Center on October 5th when the Blues face the Washington Capitals in an NHL preseason game. Go to stlouisblues.com for more information. Blues are Proud to have Kansas City in the heartland of hockey. And we'll have Blues hockey here on Fox Sports Kansas City again this season, returning in October. Orleans got some problems here. Infield's halfway in. That's to give 
a little bit more range with the runner at second base so they can knock it down if he tries to get through them. Maven has one of the three home runs tonight. Cuthbert one hop. He'll look Iglesias back. One away. And now Moylan gets Miguel Cabrera with runners at second and third. Cabrera walked and scored in the first inning. He's also flied to right and struck out. Outside for ball one. <laughs> Mentioned earlier that Cabrera on Sunday got his 200. 2500th career hit fourth youngest at 33 years old the only players younger than him to reach that milestone Ty Cobb Rogers Hornsby and Hank Aaron <laughs> That's some pretty big names to be in company with when you start achieving something and you're one of four or one of five there's the statue of Ty Cobb no number they didn't have numbers when Cobb played. And those are the Tigers who have had their numbers retired. Three balls, one strike. And Miguel Cabrera now is finding himself on many lists where he is one of five or one of six. Barring any injuries, he's heading to the hall. Here's another list. Yeah, look at those names. 300 average and 500 slugging percentage. All Hall of Famers. And one future Hall of Famer. How about being on a list like that? <laughs> it's, it's pretty awesome. I think one of the most impressive parts of his game is the fact that he loves doing it. Mm -hmm. He has so much fun out there yeah. every day. Bases loaded one out for Victor Martinez. Martinez walked in the first he homered in the third and then singled in the fourth. He has hit four grand slams in his career. Boyle wants that ground ball out. Double play. Two and zero. Oh. That pitch. I think he made exactly the pitch he wanted to make. Didn't get the call. Four pitch walk. Moylan's a little unhappy that he didn't get at least one of those two pitches and. Has a few words for Laz Diaz. So Iglesias, who opened the inning reaching on an error, 
scores on Moylan's second straight walk. Well, pitch three was a lot farther outside than we thought. Yeah. And Victor wasn't going to be swinging there. So the Tigers get the run right back. Dave Island goes out for a quick chat. And here's J.D. Martinez. This is Moylan's. 45th outing this season. And that's way more uh, than his previous three seasons combined. He only had 44 three seasons combined. So he's he's getting a chance. And when he came to spring training this year, you know, I saw him and, and I went up and introduced myself to him and come to find out he's a veteran guy. He's been around a long time. But I didn't have any idea that this is his biggest workload he's had in a season. Doing a nice job. Just, uh, wants to get back in there now. They can't give him any more runs. Look at hit that ball right at somebody. Fouled away by JD Martinez. And now it's Scott Alexander warming up in the Royals bullpen. Kinsler tags. And Dyson makes a catch. And Dyson will surprise he went to third there. That didn't appear to be that deep in center field, but he had decided, and Moylan looks a little surprised. Tyson decided that he was going to go to third. I thought he might get behind that ball and unload one to the plate. Well, you could tell Moylan wanted him to come home because Moylan was backing up home plate. I think when the ball was hit, he thought it was a lot deeper than it actually was. Gerard. No, two down and now Upton. Swinging from his heels, literally. He doubled in the first inning, driving it a run, and then homered in the third. Cabrera moves up to third base on a wild pitch. That was an easy read for him. Let's go back and look at the Dyson play here. Okay. He catches it, and he was already had his mind made up. He was going to throw it to third. And it's almost like everyone immediately looked out to center field, like, what was that? With his arm and Kinsler, you know, he runs well, but he's certainly not one of the fastest guys in the league. One and two on Upton. In this ballpark where it's 420. To center field at times an outfielder looks shallow because he's so far away from the wall but he really isn't that shallow. Tigers get two and at the end of six they lead by seven.
Six innings and now he has a seven run lead as we head to the top of the seventh as Panera takes us around the league. It's now in the eighth inning in Arizona still leads Baltimore two nothing Orioles a half game back of the Tigers for the second spot. Toronto leads New York five nothing bottom of the seventh they have the first wild card position. Houston is down 2 1 to the Angels bottom of the fifth they're a game and a half back of the Tigers and Seattle two games back they're just getting started in Minnesota. Andrew Romine takes over at short so Iglesias who is hit on the right hand by that Cuthbert throw is done for the night. Well, Cuthbert certainly didn't want to make his 16th air on the play let alone hit him. But that's two guys that's been hit Cabrera it, it, his finger it hit his index finger. And it affected him two but two at bats. After that. If you're a hitter and you got issues with your fingers or your your wrist you're having trouble just like Lorenzo Cain. Yeah hitters you're, too. Yeah. You, you're having issues. Feel uh, so important. You know one of the things that we haven't seen a lot of this year is pitchers getting bone bruises on their hands and fingers for trying to feel the ball barehanded. We haven't seen any of those. I think guys are getting smart. And, you know they, they, they realize that by the time the ball gets to them they're pulling their hand back saying you know it's not worth it. I think the shifts may have a little bit to do with that because now you got guys playing up the middle so frequently on balls hit up the middle. That's a good point. Nine strikeouts for Fulmer. Escobar's one for three. How about you Monty did you have the self control to allow those balls to your throwing hand side go by you or was your instinct to try and grab them. I don't think I ever got hurt so I probably didn't try to grab them. The guys behind me were a whole lot better than I was. <laughs> but it's hard. I mean you can't blame a pitcher. I mean here's a ball coming right back to them. It's within their reach. Sometimes not hit very hard and I mean it's hard not to react and try and grab it. Yeah if they're if they're not hit too hard try to do everything you can a lot of times guys will throw their spikes out try to kick it kick save throw your hand behind your back to try to catch it a lot of things you can do but if it's got a little hair on it coming up the middle not much chance base hit left field for Cuthbert he's one for three now we've seen a few of those uh, kicks but we haven't seen a finger injury Monty had one of the best plays I've seen a pitcher ever make. What was that? A, it was a, a ground ball behind him and it was just a blind swipe at it and I mean it went right in the glove like a Harlem Globetrotters move had it all the way Monty had it all the way just Who hit my, that ball I, I can't remember <laughs> it found my glove I didn't catch it. Butera. Flies out to Martinez and right. Drew is one for three. Two down. Homer an out away from giving the Tigers seven tonight. He's at 91 pitches. And HUD said in the very first inning that the Tigers have been very careful with his workload. They have not started him on normal four days rest in over a month. And they have kept him under 100 pitches. And 16 of his 24 starts. So they're trying to take care of him, but this has been interesting. It's hard to get in any kind of rhythm. I mean, he's had he's had eight days between rest, in between starts, seven, six, seven. You don't usually see that, but this late in the season, you're you're seeing more and more managers babying their pitchers. That's to keep them healthy. Another young pitcher Aaron Sanchez was with the Blue Jays who they really they shut him down then they sent him to the minor leagues they went to six man rotation and I don't think he's been the same since they, they, they did that I think he got out of his uh, he got out of that that routine that rhythm. Still 0 and 2 on Dyson. Alex Wilson is the right hander in the Tiger bullpen.
One and two. Assault to Lamakia's glove. Fulmer has struck out nine, and he has struck out that many for the fourth time this year. His season high is 11. Still one and two. And giving him a battle. He has fouled off four pitches in this at bat. Fulmer is another great arm out of the Mets organization. Drafted out of high school, out of Edmond, Oklahoma. Mets first round pick in 2011, and then traded to the Tigers last year for Yoenis Cespedes. So that's a deal that's helped out both teams. Foul ball. You guys, along with Fulmer, if you look at the next two two starting pitchers for the Tigers, they really like Boyd and Norris. Those two guys are going to be around a couple lefties for quite a while in this rotation. You hear Verlander, you hear Zimmerman at the top of the rotation, but these three youngsters are going to be there for a while. All coming in trades last year. Yep. Boyd and Norris from the Toronto Blue Jays for David Price. That's low, two and two, and I think there was more than one reason. There's always more than one reason, but one thing that was brought up why Dave Dombrowski was fired when he was in August last year, right after the deadline, is that the owner, Mike Illich, was frustrated that he was trading away. He was basically giving up on the season last year. And Dave Dombrowski and the Tigers ended up finishing last. So if he had the foresight. He knew what was going on. But hey, look, this isn't going to happen. But we have some guys that we can trade away. And in the trade for Cespedes, they got Fulmer. And for the in the trade for David Price, they got Boyd and they got Norris. And now Dave Dombrowski is with the Red Sox, and they're running away with the American League East. Chopped out to Kinsler. It took 11 pitches, but Fulmer gets Dyson two and the top of the seventh inning. One hit, one left. The Tigers lead 8 1.
changes. But first, our Northtown Mazda game break. Thank you, Stan. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasure good afternoon to you. I had to get that out because, in all honesty, if you ask me this very minute, how do you feel about what's going on? I would honestly well, that was say earlier in the year when they had Vince Scully way, and this weekend, Vince Scully Appreciation Weekend at Dodger Stadium. The last games he'll ever call at Dodger Stadium, and he will call one more at San Francisco to end the year. Talk to some people about him today, and we'll continue on Sunday. But Whit Merrifield, who just as a rookie, said he had three goals if he ever made it to the big leagues. One was to face Mariano Rivera's cutter just to see what it was like. One was to get out there and tap his hero Derek Jeter on the back and the other was to hear Vin Scully call his name none of those ever happened for wit but you you think about the appreciation from so many generations for Vin Scully and the umpires have always loved Vin Scully and Dan Iasonia was telling me today that as is tradition for umpires they will tip their caps up towards the booth every time that they see Vin Scully before a game and he said that Vin had done some research on him and he was shocked by it. He had looked at the media guide and read that Dan Iasonia plays the bagpipes. So in return to that gesture for tipping the cap, he kind of pantomimed and gestured that he was playing the bag bagpipes. And Dan thought that was just the coolest thing ever. But Ryan fans tonight coming to Dodger Stadium handed a personalized letter from Vin Scully that thanked them and he told the story about how on October 2nd 1936 as a young boy he wanted to see the score of the World Series game between the Yankees and the Giants and he loved the Giants and he peeked into the laundromat just to see if he could catch a glimpse of the score that was posted he got it 80 years to the day he will call his last Dodgers game how perfect at the Giants on October 2nd and I saw this stat I think from baseball reference 10,637 Dodger games 23 no hitters and 9,233 Dodger home runs. That might not account for a couple days that he missed here and there, but think about that. 80 years worth of being a baseball guy and nearly 70 as a broadcaster of the Dodgers. Everybody's got a Vince Scully story. Well, you're right. There's no doubt about that. As Ibar reaches first, I was just doing the math. If somebody was starting their career this year to catch Vin Scully their career would end in 2083. <laughs> oh, I mean we might be playing games on the moon yeah. so by 2083. Yeah, how many how many years are you in now Ryan? How many years with the Royals now? What are 19? It, 18 with the Royals 22 overall so I'll stick with one team so you got another what 59 years to go. <laughs> yeah, that's it or 49 49, 49 years, years to go. <laughs> so it's incredible. Let's see. That would be uh, 96 years old. 2063. <laughs> Keep on going. Oh man. Phenomenal career. Oh. It, and you wouldn't need HUD by your side either. You just have to do it by yourself. You, no partner. Sorry HUD. No no no. If anyone could do it Rhino could. Yeah. But. Joel's right. I mean. An 88 year old man who's the greatest ever does all nine innings all by himself on television and the first three innings they simulcast on radio and TV. Oh man. Ball hit Cuthbert in the heel of his glove but Chris Young is there to pick him up. So Cuthbert committed an error last inning which led to an unearned run and then on a pop up. Ball did not land in the webbing, but Chris Young was right there, and the Royals get an out out of it. That was scary because the way that ball kicked off his heel, it didn't look like they were going to get an out out of it. it. Hit him in the dead spot, right there in the heel of the glove, and then you could see the panic. And Young quickly reacted nice, gave Merrifield a good strike, got Ibar. Gotta pick him up. Andrew Romine bats for the first time. Oh. 
No balls, two strikes. So just your typical 5-1-4 fielder's choice. It's nice to see Young should be good and strong. His last outing was September 15th versus the Oakland A's. Fastball, slider are his two pitches. Occasional change-ups. All right, Royals fans, many kids in our community can't play baseball because they can't afford equipment. So you can help by donating new and used equipment during the Royals Equipment Drive next Thursday when the gates open. Donated equipment will benefit Alta Vista High School, serving low-income kids in the greater Kansas City community. The next time the Royals retire Ian Kinsler tonight will be the first time. He has walked twice, singled, doubled, and scored three runs. We were joking last night after the game was over in Cleveland. There was a tweet that came through that Ian Kinsler had done some baseball activity yesterday in Minnesota and declared himself ready for the beginning of this series with the Royals. And the common response was, of course he is. Yeah. He has been so tough on the Royals the last two years that if he has concussion like symptoms when those fade away there's probably a Royals series coming up. Good fastball two balls two strikes. Romine just struck out. And he had replaced Jose Iglesias on defense in the last half inning. And now we just found out that Iglesias had x rays on his right hand. They were negative. And he is, like the rest of us, day to day. Two strikeouts for Chris Young in a scoreless bottom of the seventh inning. Michael Fulmer, he's out of the game, fortunately. And just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Michael Fulmer, a, a very strong pitcher. They've been taking care of him, giving him some rest. In between starts, a little more than he wants, but they're in charge. Seven innings, eight hits, no walks, nine strikeouts. Gives him 129 strikeouts on the season for a rookie. That's one of the all time best in Tiger history. He's, he's getting close to, the, to breaking that mark. But he's got a few more outings to go. Blaine Hardy will pitch the eighth, the former Royals farmhand. Coming on for the 18th time this year. He'll get Merrifield, Hosmer, and Morales. Okay, so Fulmer. 
with his nine strikeouts tonight he passed Verlander and Armando Galarraga and now Les Kane is the next guy up and he has a Tiger record for rookie strikeouts at 156. Les Kane. Yeah. When did Les Kane pitch? Doesn't have a doesn't have his year here. Just has names. Cabrera with a long run, but it bounces on the track and into the seats and into the glove of a Tiger fan who hands it. Hey, how about that? Hands it to a look like a young Royals fan. And appreciate appreciative father of that young Royals fan. Les Kane would have pitched 1968, 1970, 1971, and 1972. Thank you. He was a left hander. On the ground to Romine. Witt is two for four. Day game tomorrow. You're down Ventura against Daniel Norris. And it's an afternoon game. And you can see the game on Fox. Fox 4 back in KC. Coverage begins tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. You can also watch it live on Fox Sports Go. And then same time on Sunday back here on Fox Sports Kansas City. And that's Edinson Volquez and Matt Boyd. Hardy's going to feature, uh, feature everything including the kitchen sink. 86 to 90 with the fastball slider change curve. Trying to keep him off balance. Hosmer pulls it out to right field. He is one for four tonight, two down. Blaine Hardy spent five years in the Royals minor league system, never got to the big leagues with the Royals, a 22nd round pick. But he made his big league debut against the Royals two seasons ago, and all he had to do was navigate. Out of the bases loaded and nobody out. And that's exactly what he did. Good for him. That's a tough way to get in there. Had a couple of strikeouts to get out of that. And you know that was a little sweeter doing it against your original organization and facing players he had played with in the Royals farm system. He was more of a a power lefty fastball slider in the Royal system the Tigers turned him into more of a finesse fastball curveball lefty and that's what got him to the big leagues there's a good change up and Morales I think was going for it all yep came out of his shoes and totally <laughs> almost hurt himself that <laughs> left foot it came all the way out Lost footing. Two and two. Yeah, you're going to see a change up after a swing like that. Base hit left field, and Morales has two hits tonight. And the Royals have out hit the Tigers even though they trail by seven runs. Unforgettable games undeniable greatness and unstoppable drama. We've been there. The 2016 postseason begins October 4th. Go to MLB.com slash postseason for a full schedule.
2 0 on Paulo Orlando. Paulo drove in the Royals run with an infield single in the sixth inning. That was after a Nedios challenge. The umpires had ruled on the field that the Tigers had an inning inning double play on a ground ball from Kendry's Morales but the call was overturned and Paulo reached with an infield single to drive in a run. As the connoisseur struck again. Blaine Hardy has a scoreless eighth inning. That you play gives back to schools across Missouri, so play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your Midwest Ford dealers, visit us at your MidwestFordDealers.com. Back in Comerica, Daniel Nava in at first base for Haas. Ball's hitting the gap, Paulo. Oh, was nice. Yeah, Maven, he thought he had him a, a double. Maybe a triple. That's Triple's Alley right there at Paulo on contact. Made an outstanding running catch. Look at that perfect line. Great route. And the track meet was on. Paulo wins. Great play. One out. Chris Young's had some time off. Ooh, that slider stayed up. That hammered in left field. Mike Cabrera. It's hard to get anything by him. If it's in the middle, he's not going to miss it. What pitch has to get better for Chris Young next year? His fastball or his slider? I'm going to say his invisible, his fastball. That's the pitch that he's going to have to work on. He's young has had no issues striking people out this year. It hasn't been the problem. It's just it's just been that fastball. They've got more of it. And they've hit more home runs this year off of it. And you know he'll he'll continue to figure a way. He's a veteran. He's a smart guy. He understands.
So pinch runner Dixon Machado and a pinch hitter Stephen Moya. No balls, two strikes on Stephen Moya, who hit his first big league home run against Chris Young at Kauffman Stadium back in June. This time, Chris gets him on three straight pitches, two down. How about that matchup there? Two of the tallest you'll see pitchers, hitter in the league. Young 6'10, Moya 6'6. Six, six. Made quick work of him. Chris struck out two in a scoreless seventh inning. Now two down, and now J.D. Martinez. He's 0 for 3 tonight with a sacrifice fly. On to see. In time, inning over. Two scoreless for Chris Young. We go to the ninth. The Tigers lead 8 1. victory so they are in the driver's seat presented by Kia but it's also been a very streaky month a little over a month first the Tigers lost seven to ten then they won eleven out of fourteen then they lost eight out of eleven and now they're about to win their sixth in a row but winning their sixth in a row at the right time that's right Peaks. So it looks a little bit like the the Royals first month or so this season. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a, a tough game to try to figure out. Consistency is what everybody strives for. Baltimore, half game back, they were swept by the Red Sox, and Baltimore has tied their game in the bottom of the ninth inning, two-two, bottom of the ninth. Mark Lowe will come on and face Alex Gordon, Raul Mondesi, and Chesler Cuthbert. Alex like a lot of Royals tonight had a tough time with Michael Fulmer. He was 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Fulmer went seven. Gave up the one run. He struck out nine against no walks. Base hit right field against low. That will go deep. But in a seven run game Alex will hold with a single as. J.D. Martinez fires it back to the infield. <laughs>
Lowe's got a fastball. Low 90s slider. Occasional changeup. On to see pops it up. There's Machado at shortstop. One down. And now Chester Cuthbert is one for three tonight. Royals are two outs away from falling back to the 500 mark. They are currently 77 and 76. Okay, now they're going to have to fight to stay over 500 now. That's their goal. Two and zero. Last time the Royals were at 500 was here in Detroit when they swept the three game series from the Tigers in the middle of August their record was 60 and 60 and that was right in the middle of the nine game winning streak. Two and two. Mark Lowe, he's had a tough year. His ERA is inflated close to seven. He's given up 12 homers. Had been a good year for him. And he was one of the guys that they were counting on this year to serve as a bridge to Francisco Rodriguez, the closer. Yep. And now Cuthbert's on with a walk. We were going over the Tigers' numbers earlier. It really hasn't been a, a good season. <laughs> On the mound, the Tigers are 10th in the league in ERA, but that has turned around in the second half. The Tigers have the third best ERA in the American League since the All Star break, trailing only Tampa Bay and Boston. So, 10th for the entire season in the league, but third in the second half. So those pieces are coming together at the right time as they start. They hope getting ready for the postseason. You got to like that extra wild card they threw in there that gives a lot of teams and a lot of cities energy this time of year. Off speed in for a strike 0 and 2 on Butera. He had a third inning single one for three. Swing. Bob Davidson is the first base umpire. 28 year veteran. Just outside, two and two. It has been mostly a hitter friendly strike zone tonight. And we saw that very early in the game. Yep. 
Last Laz Diaz. Yeah, he squeezed Duffy a little bit early. Danny just had an off night. Two down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Club. Two on, two out for Gerard Dyson. He is 0 for 4 tonight. One and one. It's amazing. These two teams have been playing each other since 1969. And when the final out is recorded, this all time series will be tied 331 to 331. Wow. One ball, two strikes. The Tigers have outscored the Royals over the years by 14 runs if you add in the seven tonight but pretty even look at the two ERA's and the two runs scored it's amazing right center field long run and that is down and Dyson is going to drive in a pair. And so it's 8 3. Alex Gordon scores. Chesler Cuthbert scores. And Dyson's first hit comes in the ninth inning. It's a two out, two run triple. Seventh on the year. He hit it right there in Triple's Alley. Low speed pitch. Draw a nice, easy swing. And, huh. Mark Lowe. He's having a low point. So with the potential tying run in the clubhouse having a bowl of cereal <laughs> Brad Osmus is going to make a pitching change. <laughs> oh, cool. By the all new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. There's 
the historic Fox Theater, just a couple of blocks from Comerica Park. Shane Green is out of the Tiger bullpen. Trying to nail this one down. Runner at third, two down. And a slider's outside to Whit Merrifield. Two hits and a run scored for Whit. It's got to be pretty embarrassing when you, know, you mention the numbers that Mark Lowe's had this year, and your manager takes you out in a five run game with two outs in the ninth inning. Yeah, that's, that's tough. That just doesn't make Mark Lowe feel any better. But he's the skipper. He knows his team better than we do. Witt can look for a fastball. He's got a good one. A little sinking fastball. Cutter. Looks in a slider and a curve. Two and one. Witt looking for his third hit tonight. Two and two. Where was that pitch earlier in the game? Really? Well, it's getting late now. Laz Diaz, I think, is afraid if this game doesn't end that Brad Osmus will make another pitching change. That's right. Still two and two. There's Michael Fulmer. He went. Seven innings, gave up one run, struck out nine. Blaine Hardy, a scoreless eighth. Mark Lowe, charged with two runs in this inning. He's still responsible for Dyson at third. Tigers bullpen. Against the Royals this year has a 6.93 ERA. Not much of a factor tonight, but the Royals will scrap it on again tomorrow and try and even the series. Michael Fulmer led the way on the mound, giving up one run in seven innings, and the Tigers scored six of their eight runs in the first four innings. Final score 8-3 in Detroit. We'll be right back. <laughs>